Hello and welcome to the Room of Randomness. I have a weird relationship with the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. I love the premise, I love the story, I love the atmosphere, I love the lack of overly disgusting visuals. The only thing I don't love are the jump scares. I do not take jump scares well. Ah! Ah! Sorry, I just couldn't resist. As I was saying, I do not take jump scares well. Hell, the first time I played the original game, I had to bring some friends in just to lighten the tension. And yet, for some reason, FNAF Security Breach intrigued me as a game that I just had to play for myself. I think why can most easily be described with this quote from Yahtzee Croshaw's review of the first game. If I suspect that jump scares are lying in wait as I prowl around the corridors of dead space or amnesia, I want to know that I can respond by opening fire, or legging it in the opposite direction going, <laughs> you know, something proactive. So I checked out the game, and short version, It'd be great if it wasn't so jank! In this game you play as Gregory, a young boy who gets locked in overnight at Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex. With the help of the titular animatronic mascot, you have to avoid the security guard as well as a myriad of other robots until the doors reopen at 6am, and possibly discover the dark secrets the Pizzaplex holds. And I do mean possibly, as the game has multiple endings. Let's talk about the good first. I love the set design in this place. The devs clearly put a lot of thought into the layout of the Pizzaplex, and I'm not gonna lie, I would love to see this in real life. Me, 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 me. Well, yeah, obviously. And much like the games before, the aforementioned animatronics prowling around, mixed with a silent, echoey location, does a lot to build up the dread. However, there are a couple of game design choices that I'm a little iffy on. First up, escaping the daycare. While it is a good way to make you learn how to best use the flashlight, it's only the second mission in the game, and it pretty much takes away your ability to use the camera. The second, and honestly more of a nitpick, is the watch. It allows you to access the cameras, get missions and messages, look at the map. That baby will do everything but tell you what time it is. It doesn't tell time? No. There was so much stuffed into it, there was no more room for the clock. Sad part is, that's not a joke. I just think it's kind of dumb that the only way to check the in-game time is inside Freddy. My last sticking point is that once you hit 6am, you can either leave the Pizzaplex or explore it more looking for secrets. However, if you do that, the save points get disabled, meaning that if you, say, die to a stupid mistake, you get set back to this point with all your work undone. I know that removing saves increases the tension as failing is more punishing, but I feel like the game is asking you to do a bit too much without them, Especially when you consider that that means doing it in one sitting. Primarily, around 4 o'clock you get a single party pass that allows you to do either the Phaser Blast Arena or Monty's Gator Golf. These set you on a path destroying either Chica or Monty respectively. If you stay after 6, you get a second pass to do the other one. And while completing either of these without saves is absolutely doable, it personally took me about an hour. And for me, nothing hurts the motivation to get something done quite like having to redo a substantial amount. Fortunately, thanks to the speedrun community, I found ways to make the lack of saves a non-issue. Yeah, as I said, this game is pretty jank. To be fair, at time of writing, a lot of the big issues have been patched out, but I still want to talk about them. Mainly, prompts were broken, causing soft locks. The most notable of which was with the Princess Quest minigames. AKA, the dumbest mistake I've ever seen in a port job. I don't know about the PS4 version, but on the PS5, the minigame didn't respond to controller inputs. While I'm not sure about the technicals, the best way I can describe it is that the minigame was expecting keyboard inputs. How do you miss this? Especially when doing these is crucial to get one of the endings! Fortunately, that issue has been fixed, but there are still others, including the PSN trophy for destroying all the animatronics not triggering. But honestly, the remaining things I actually hope don't get patched out. Stuff like using Freddy's ability to open any door while you're not inside him, the jump glitch that can get you into areas that you're otherwise blocked off from, and of course, the Phaser Blast skip. All of which I can argue you'd never really see if you weren't actively looking, and personally, it helped me enjoy the game more. Overall, Security Breach is a very unpolished game, but the setting and actual gameplay kept me coming back for more despite swearing that I was done with it. I'm the Review Reviewer, and this has been Room of Randomness.